Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Brian and welcome to Classic G-Body Garage and to the final episode of Project Scrap National. Now if this is your first time tuning in to Classic G-Body Garage or the Scrap National video series, let me give you guys a quick breakdown of what this car is all about. Now this 87 Buick Grand National was scrapped, hence its name, Scrap National. It was scrapped at Pull Apart Used Auto Parts and they are a nationwide junkyard chain. The type of junkyard where you bring your own tools into their yards, you grab the parts that you need to get your car going and back on the road. And being a nationwide junkyard chain, they receive in hundreds of cars in through, through their doors each and every week. And this Grand National ended up being one of those cars. And fortunately, since I've done work with Pull Apart in the past, they did realize what this car was, put it aside, gave me a call. They sent me some pictures through email. I, in fact, verified that this car was real. And then the car was sent here to Classic G-Body Garage for me to go through it front to back and find out exactly what the car needed to revive it and get it going and back on the road. Now, getting it back on the road, well, that's what this video is all about. You see, I haven't even driven the car yet. I've done all this work. I've had the car since 2017. And throughout the process, yeah, 2017 has been four years ago, I flat out lost motivation on this car. And that's why it's taken me so long. I mean, this car just really beat me up, guys. But I won. I got the car running and I'm ready to take it down the street. Before we take this car down the road, let me do a quick walk around. We'll show you guys what it looks like back out here in the daylight, out from the garage, and then we'll take it on the road. All right, so at first glance, this Grand National looks pretty nice. I mean, who would scrap such a beautiful car? I mean, it's nice and glossy black. There's no rust on it. Overall, it just looks really nice. But the car didn't look like this when it showed up at Pull Apart back in 2017. In the first video of this series, I post the pictures that Pull Apart sent me through email when they wanted me to verify that this car was a true Grand National. It didn't look anything like what it does today. The paint was faded, the car was rusty, and it looked like someone dragged it out of somebody's backyard. But still, it was a Grand National and the car was complete. Even if it was a regular Buick Regal, the car was in surprisingly nice shape. So what Pull Apart ended up doing before it came to me is they had some bodywork done in the car and they had it painted. Uh, I kind of wish they would have left it alone because it was kind of cool the way it was and the way they received it in. And the bodywork and the paint job that was put on the car is, is subpar. Yeah, nicely put. So that's what it looks like around the uh, the outside. It does have its issues. I mean, all the weather stripping is shot. Huge holes in it. The door doesn't uh, door doesn't want to close all the way. There's issues going on with the latch. You can see the big uh, chunks taken out of the weather stripping. Seats tore. I mean, that's minor, really. I mean, the car is in surprisingly nice shape. Typical wear for a car of this age. Busted out steering wheel, uh, horn cap, and the uh, console is pulling away as well. Really minor, honestly. It has 131,000 miles if this decides to zoom in. There you go, 131,000. Complete car, everything's here, including the original radio. So overall, the car is in pretty nice shape. So let me open the hood. I'll show you what it looks like underneath here. And you know, fortunately, the car is in fact all original. I mean, if this was a hacked up car when it, w when it showed up at Pull Apart, it would have been uh, real difficult to try to, you know, sort through everything and get the parts that it needed to get it going and back on the road. It would have been a lot of uh, parts hunting, but fortunately the car was complete and to the point where it was worth putting uh, time and money into it. So everything underneath here, is original for the most part with the exception of 42 pound injectors, adjustable fuel pressure regulator, which I upgraded both of those and also the computer chip in the ECM just to sort out the fuel system issues that it had. New plugs, new wires, vacuum lines, uh, another vacuum block here up on top, which feeds the vacuum assisted brake, boost, uh, brake system. So that was an upgrade as well. 
Uh, what else? The relays ended up being in good shape for the fans. Cleaned out some of the, the uh, sensor plugs so the fans would kick on. I do have to do some work to uh, some of the char or the uh, turbo system as far as these boots go and clamps. I will get to all that once I verify that the car actually drives down the road. I just wanted it to the point where it wouldn't stall anymore and also where the car stops. We'll put some miles on it. We'll uh, verify that everything is good and functional. Then I'll worry about anything further that the car needs. Let me fire it up. You can hear how it sounds. Motor sounds great. There are no internal noises. Cylinder number five, as far as the compression goes, came back to life with all the running that I've done to it, figuring the car out. So that is a huge, huge thing. So the car is running on all six. It sounds good. It idles down. Let's get a listen to that exhaust. The exhaust sounds great. The car seems to be running good. It idles, it doesn't want to stall, it doesn't hesitate, and the brakes hold it when you put it in gear. So let me hop inside and we'll take it down the road. All right. Fire it back up, had to put the camera away. All right, settle back down. Coming up a little bit high on the idle there after initial startup. Just needs to be driven, right? Need some miles on it. All right, ma'am. Super excited about driving this car for the first time ever after all this work after it's sitting in the garage since 2017 we're gonna find out if the transmission works first and foremost secondly if the brakes which seem to be working around the driveway here if the brakes stop the car on the street faster than 10 miles an hour the rear ends good I guess and also most importantly that good old scrap national doesn't leave me stranded but I do have my cell phone which is recording this video so I have friends I can call and a tow truck on speed dial so here goes second oh second gear Third gear, all right. Let's see if we can hit overdrive. We're at 40 miles an hour. Overdrive. Nice, nice. Smooth so far. Considering how long the car's been sitting in the garage on these old tires, they don't even, ooh, that didn't sound good, hit that bump. It doesn't sound, or it doesn't feel bad, it doesn't have uh, flat spots in the tires. I don't know maybe because it was up on jack stands for so long Doing the brakes that the tires kind of filled themselves back out, but I can't believe I'm driving the car. This is awesome This is really cool. This is really cool Horn works Wow, this is this is awesome. I'm really surprised how nice it drives uh, actually, oops, let me hit the brakes. I gotta see if the brakes even worked. Doing 45 miles an hour. Coming to a stop. All right, brakes work. So I'm not gonna do any real hard acceleration tests uh, just yet, just because transmission shifts pretty nice. I wanna make sure that the car uh, goes through all, gets up the temperature, goes through all of its uh, functions and transmission gets up the temperature. Also, you know, as mentioned, I don't want to get on it too hard because the uh, the oil is a little bit older, so I'll change the oil. And also, I only have like eighth of a tank of gas, so I'm gonna have to uh, fill up the gas get, gas tank and make sure this gas gauge works as well. It seems to be working just based on how much gas I put in the car. So, uh, yeah, this is 
this is really cool this is really cool so got a car flying down the road and I don't know how good this car accelerates just yet so I'm gonna let this car get by me uh, when I let off the brakes there something felt a little bit clunky maybe the uh, rear trailing arms are a little bit loose on it these mirrors we got an adjustment oh I hear that turbo that turbo is pulling up. Yeah, it sounds good. It sounds good. I don't want I don't want to jump the gun too much or too soon and say the car is great because I've literally only put like two miles on it. If that. But so far so good. I'm happy. Uh, no warning lights on the dashboard yet. The brake light's not on. Check engine light's not on. Uh, the hot light is not on. I can't tell how, how hot the car is running, but since I put that computer chip in it, the cooling fans do come on a lot sooner, which is nice. I'm going to slow down for these railroad tracks. Man, something. The door's loose, and there's something clunking in the front end, too, when I go over bumps. And there's also something clunking in the rear end. But that, I mean, I, I'm not worried about that right now. I'm, I'm, I'm happy I'm driving the car. Uh, going through its gears it's cruising at 45 miles an hour overdrive just kicked in and this is really cool so I have no idea how long the car sat before I got it considering I got it back in 2017 the summer of 2017 and who knows how long the car sat before I even got it no one knows the true story on it the reason why it was scrapped maybe it was you know the brakes didn't work very expensive to fix these electronic brakes on these cars uh, Maybe that's what did the car in. Who knows? And that's why it sat. Maybe the, the owner passed away. Maybe the uh, the family didn't want the car because it was too expensive to fix. They didn't know anything about it. And it was just a scrap car or an old car sitting in their yard. And hey, the good news is, Pull Apart got the car. They set it aside. I got my hands on it and now I'm driving it. So this is a really cool story. And I'm very, very happy with how nice the car handles, how nice it drives down the road, the steering feels tight, the transmission's tight. So everything is great so far. So I'm gonna head to the gas station before I run out of gas. And uh, I'll probably put about, I don't know, 15 gallons or so, see if I can get it up to about three quarters of a tank. I don't wanna top it off just yet, uh, just in case I have to take the, the gas tank back down for whatever reason. But I'll do that, and then I'll uh, get some more miles on it. I at least want to put 10 to 20 miles on it today, and then uh, pull it back into the driveway and kind of wrap things up. We'll see how things go. Seven octane in it before so I put 93 to 93 octane because that's what this computer chip calls for and plus it's a turbo car so I want to make sure that you that I get some high octane gas in it uh, before I really start to run it and also change the oil of course but accelerating nice through the gears up to 45 miles an hour 55 
and I'll stop at 60. Now that was barely with my foot into it, but I want to uh, circulate this high octane gas through it, put a few more miles on it. Uh, I'll do probably, you know, once I feel comfortable that the car is running good, uh, so far so good, uh, I'll do uh, a quick half throttle up to probably 60, 65 miles an hour. Make sure that turbo spools up. We'll see how hard it pulls. And uh, yeah, we'll kind of go from there. So as I'm putting the miles on this car, I'm noticing a couple things. The suspension is very loose. It needs, it either, it either needs shocks, stabilizer bushings, or stabilizer link. Something is really loose on the on this car, and as that hit bumps, it kind of bounces and shimmies all over the road. I mean, the, the suspension's got 131,000 miles. I'm sure most of it's stock, original, I should say. The shocks don't appear to be original, but I think everything else is. So it's kind of bounced all over the road. Definitely not as stiff and tight as I, you know, I would like it to be for a Grand National. But overall, the car is driving pretty nice. Very, very happy about that. All right, there's a little bit of acceleration test. Oh yeah. Woo! This thing is strong. Oh, check engine light just came on. I got into the I got into the boost and the check engine light came on. So I'm not sure what that's all about. Maybe the throttle position sensor, I don't know. But that's the heaviest that I've accelerated with the car. That was just from a traffic light. I haven't even got to the back road yet. But when I hit the gas kind of hard, it was maybe just almost halfway down. Now the check engine light's on. But we're still running. Maybe it just needs to beat down. All right, I found myself a side street, at least one that I'm familiar with. I'll turn down it, and we'll have a little bit of fun. All right, get it to a dead stop. And here we go. Nice. Woo! Right up to 60 miles an hour. Nice. This thing runs good. That, now that was not floored. I don't want to beat on this car too much because I do want to change that oil. But man, this thing pulls pretty damn strong. Pretty nice. But there's one more thing I want to do before I bring it back home. I want to find out if this car will do a burnout. All right, let's think. Let's uh, bring this thing up on boost and see if it'll roast the tires. <laughs> oh yeah. It'll do it. The Posi also works as well. As soon as that boost kicks in, boy, those tires started to roll. I can't wait to have a little bit more fun with this car. Man, it sounded good. It sounded good. Alright guys, made it back. Car didn't leave me stranded. And also, I am pretty surprised on how nice this car drives overall. I mean, I couldn't be any happier really. So, I put about 20, 25 miles on it. I filled it up with 93 octane. Uh, the car 
just runs awesome. I mean, it, it's strong. I really didn't get into it all that much, but I'm sure there's a lot more potential back behind that gas pedal. So, you know, overall the car uh, has some uh, suspension issues. The rear end is a little bit clunky as well. And also the uh, AC compressor clutch, that thing will not stop making noise. So I have to figure that out as well. So that is pretty much it with this one, guys. I mean, like I said, I can't be any happier with how nice this car runs, considering how long it's been sitting, at least here. Four years, you know, that isn't that long, but I have no idea how long the car sat prior to getting it here at Class G Body Garage. And this drive pretty much verified all the work that I did on the car was successful. So anything more that this car needs now will just be regular TLC, suspension work, air conditioning work, change the rear end fluid, uh, the rotors are warped a little bit as well, and the suspension has a clunking sound. So you gotta sort through all that, but I'm at a very good point where I can say that this project has been a success. So this is gonna be the end of the series. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you follow along on Clutch G Body Garage by hitting that subscribe button. Also that little bell that will keep you all notified of cool videos like this one. Project Scrap National may be seen once again here on the YouTube channel. But Clutch G Body Garage also can be found on Instagram and Facebook, guys. So make sure you follow along there as well. And until the next classic G Body Garage video, make sure you keep those G Bodies rolling.